The 5-Minute Leadership Podcast is all about helping you solve your leadership shortage. Today, William Morrow will talk about some leadership principles going deep in church history to the monastic movements. Here it is, 5-Minute Leadership Podcast with William Murrell. I was asked to speak on the topic of leadership habits. So as, as anyone would do, I googled leadership habits online and found about a million blogs, some giving five, some giving six, some giving three essential leadership habits. I knew that wasn't really helpful. Most of what they said was kind of obvious or repeating itself. So as I began thinking about what would be helpful for leaders in that context, I turned to a very old book from the sixth century called The Rule of St. Benedict. And those of you who know anything about church history you know that St. Benedict was, is known as the founder of Western monasticism. And his rule or, or sort of guide for monks was a very detailed guide on how monastic life should be, how they should structure their time, their work, their prayer as monks. And as I read the rule of St. Benedict again, I began to see all these leadership principles pop off the page, things that really you don't see when you Google leadership habits and look at the common blogs and common things that are written in books, best-selling books today. So as I thought about that group of leaders, I, I was, I was inspired to think about how can Christian leaders in ministry learn leadership lessons from the monastery. And if I were to summarize in one word what we can learn from monks and what we can learn about leadership from the monastery, the word would be rhythm. Very often we like to think about leadership and about growth as sort of this balancing act. How do we get work and life balance? How do we get balance between, uh, between family and ministry? But really it's not a matter of of making sure if you do too much of this, you do more of that. Really, what we learn from the monastery is that life and success in leadership is much more about rhythm. And the, the difference between rhythm and balance is that we recognize that you really can't balance things. It's hard to do the math, and you're always gonna be working more than you're resting. You're always gonna be involved in your day job more than you're involved in your hobbies. You work five or six days a week, you rest one or two. So really what matters most is not trying to balance things, but trying to establish rhythms in our lives. And rhythms are repeated and predictable practices. So we're just gonna look at a few monastic rhythms, things that monks for hundreds of years have prioritized, that have, that have made their lives unique, and things that we as leaders can incorporate in our own lives. One of the first and perhaps most important monastic rhythms, uh, you can see if you let's read a short portion of Benedict's recommended daily schedule for a monk. He says, in the morning, labor at whatever is required until about the fourth hour, which is 10 a.m. From the fourth hour until near the sixth, let them apply themselves to reading. When they rise from the table after the sixth hour, let them rest on their beds in perfect silence. And about the middle of the eighth hour, let them work again at whatever has to be done. And here in the context of the monastic world, work involved the combination of prayer, study, and manual labor. But what's really interesting here is that Benedict doesn't say work really hard and try to clock in your nine to fives you have a lot to do. He actually had this balance, as you notice here, of work and rest. He has them rest in the middle of the day and lay on their beds in silence. One of the counterintuitive principles we see here and one of the core rhythms of any Christian leader's life is this principle of work and rest. And the main idea is this, our best rest comes after hard work and our best work comes after deep soul rest. So here's the question we have to ask ourselves is what does rest look like for you as a leader? What does your day off look like and are you really resting? I know a lot of people in the ministry feel like there, there are things that could come up at any moment that might take them out of their, their Sabbath or might take them out of something they were planning on doing. And sometimes people have to be on call, but there's a difference between being on call and prepared in case the emergency happens and obsessing about work and needing to be needed. And the reality is if we as leaders build good teams and trust our teams and build good boundaries and have these rhythms of when we're working and when we're resting, we will be able to work better when it's time for us to work and we're able to enjoy the fruit of our labor, enjoy relationship when we take time to rest. Uh, one quick example for me in my own life is that I've decided on Saturdays, which is my Sabbath, I don't check email. It doesn't matter what may come. It doesn't matter if I might get behind on it. I do not check email and I actually put my phone away for most of the day. It's a really simple thing that signifies to me that I'm not working. And I think everyone in any leadership context you're working in, it's important to put those certain rhythms in place that signal to you, oh, now it's time to rest. Now it's time to cease from work. Now it's time to recognize 
that I am not the Lord of the universe. Things are not gonna fall apart if I take a break. And it's time for us to take a lesson from the monastery that we need to establish healthy rhythms of work and rest in our lives.